G'day guys, Ian here, and today we're talking about respiratory infections in carpet pythons. Now guys, if you are new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications, and welcome to Cookies Critters. So guys, much like us humans, our snakes can also get a cold and flu, but we call them respiratory infections, or RI for short. Now, uh, one of my carpet pythons does have a respiratory infection as we speak, and uh, we are gonna show you how we do our home remedy here at Cookies Critters, and later on through the video, if required for this snake, we will show you the medical intervention given by a veterinarian. So guys, it is crucial that we identify any health changes to our snakes as soon as humanly possible. Things that we want to keep an eye out are on the snake's breathing. You should not be able to hear your snake breathing at all. And if you can hear bubbling, raspy, cracky, weaseling kind of breathing sounds, your snake has a respiratory infection. Now, other visual cues that you might be able to tell that your snake has a respiratory infection is if you see bubbling at the corner of their mouth or excess salivation, like your uh, snake is slobbering everywhere, then fair chance that your snake has an RI. So normal behavior for a snake is for them to move around their enclosure and to be constantly flicking their tongue. This flicking of the tongue is their way of smelling the air, much like us humans use our nostrils to smell the air and the aromas around us. Now, if you notice that your snake is not doing this tongue flicking, fair chance it has a respiratory infection. Now, you may have caught your snake mid-yawn, and it is perfectly normal for a snake to yawn or to open its mouth and realign its lower jaw uh, after it's had a large feed. Now, uh, what is not common for a snake is for them to open their mouth and to leave their mouth wide open. This is a sign of discomfort and distress with their breathing. Now, if you notice that your, uh, your snake is sitting there with its mouth wide open for a prolonged period of time, straight away, you need to assume that your snake has a respiratory infection and start treatment ASAP. Now guys, before we roll across to the snake that does have the respiratory infection and how we do treat it at home, like I said earlier, it is crucial that you identify this early. If you pick this up late and you open up your snake's mouth and there is redness, bleeding, mucusy pus discharge, uh, then straight away skip this home remedy and go straight to a veterinarian to get medical treatment. But if you know your snake, if you've handled it, if you do your daily checks and cleans and you know that your snake has only just contracted this respiratory infection, then you can treat this at home without the, uh, the medical intervention required. Now guys, as we've picked up our snake at the early stage of respiratory infection, we will be treating at home and we will be monitoring the progress and we will go from there. If the animal does require medical treatment later on through the home treatment, at that stage, we will then go and see a veterinarian. G'day guys, so this is one of my two-year-old carpet pythons. Um, he is fairly new to our collection and therefore he has been in quarantine. And yesterday when I went to do his daily feed and clean, uh, I noticed that he had this raspy kind of barking breathing noise. Now, it wasn't a, uh, a typical respiratory infection kind of sound. It didn't sound wheezy or it didn't sound whistly and bubbly. Uh, just sounded like you're popping bubble wrap. Now, all the, uh, the normal signs and symptoms like uh, bubbling coming out of the corner of the mouth or excess salivation weren't present. So as you can see, he is in a bit of discomfort at the moment. He is uh, constantly opening his mouth like he is doing right now. Uh, and this is to assist with his breathing. Now, uh, as he does open his mouth, now we can see that there is excess saliva inside his mouth. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to start treating the, uh, the local signs and symptoms of this respiratory infection, and we can do that by treating the mouth itself. Now, in the background, we do have one of these uh, little fogger mister things. Where is it? Over here, that one just there. And that's loaded with the, uh, the F10 dilution in the, uh, in the background there. Now, for a small container, a small vaporizer like this, we are only using one mil of F10 diluted in distilled water. 
Now also in the background, the, uh, the yellow bottle uh, next to the F10 is a bottle of Listerine. Hey guys, so as we can see, we do have the, the Listerine down here and we've also got the, uh, the cotton tips as well. Now with the cotton tips and the Listerine, it's important to note that they are a single use only. Don't use the cotton tip and uh, re-dip it and double dip in the Listerine because we don't want to be spreading around the infection. What we want to do is once you've used your cotton tip, make sure you bin it. Now, as a respiratory infection is highly contagious and highly transmissible, it's important that we do wear gloves. Uh, once you've finished with the treatment, ditch your gloves, sanitize your hands all the way down to your elbows, and possibly even change your clothing, depending on the, uh, the contact that the snake has had with you during this treatment. And this is where things get interesting because uh, he is gonna wiggle around and become very active. Okay, so as we see, when he, uh, when he moves around and becomes a lot more active, that crackling is, uh, is accentuated. Now, we've got the snake, we've got him held behind the back of the head. Okay, so we dip our cotton tip, we rub it against the side of his mouth until he is willing to open it up. And there we go. Rub it in, and we only want to do one side of the uh, the bottom of the mouth before we replace the cotton tip and we do the other side. And as we can see here, there is a lot of saliva on the uh, on the cotton tip. Okay guys, so it's important to restrain the snake. Uh, you don't want them to be sort of thrashing around and trying to bite. Uh, this is a uncomfortable procedure for them. Um, usually when a snake has a respiratory infection though, they can be a little bit more docile. So just rub that in. Just remember to discard it as you've used the, uh, the cotton tip. Go the other side. Now, this, uh, this typical straightening out of the, uh, the upper body is, uh, is quite common for a snake with a respiratory infection. They're more than happy to coil their lower body, but where their lungs are, they, they typically wanna keep that part of their body straight. So uh, bear in mind that if the snake is uh, trying to straighten out, it's straightening out for a reason because it's having troubles breathing and uh, we can assist by Letting the, uh, letting the snake relax for a bit, and then continuing the procedure. Okay guys, so the boy's just been put back into his tub for the uh, for the rest of today. Tonight he will have the uh, the mouth rinse uh, repeated, and after having that done, we will show you how we do the uh, the home nebulizing with a, uh, a medical saline solution. So guys, stick around. We'll show you how that's done. Okay guys, so we've just finished our repeated mouth wash that we did this morning, and the next step for tonight is to nebulize the snake. Now, simply all we're doing is we are uh, creating a high humid environment where the snake has no choice but to breathe in this, uh, this nebulized medicine as such. Now, to do this, we are using a hypertonic saline. So this is a highly concentrated salt saline solution at around about 7%. And 
Along with that, we do have a syringe drawn up with 0.15 mil of F10 solution. Now, that is gonna go directly into our little fogger here. The fogger will be placed inside the enclosure and we're gonna do that right now. Hypertonic solution goes in. Our controlled dose of F10. Now it's always easy to start this process uh, before you put it into the snake's tub. So let's get the uh, little fogger on. And we'll move it into the snake's tub. I'm going to turn the lid around so that way the uh, the ventilated section's over the heat, not over where it's being nebulized. Now, simply all we need to do is we need to allow the uh, the fogger to uh, to go through all of that solution, and once it does that, the uh, the fogger will automatically turn off. And so what's happening now is obviously the uh, hypertonic solution and the F10 are going to be made into a uh, breathable vapor. So that way when the snake does breathe, it will actually inhale it into its lungs, get that hypertonic saline, get the F10 into its lungs and start killing the bacteria inside the lungs of the snake. Okay guys, so it is day number two now and we have just come back from the reptile veterinarian and she is satisfied with the care plan that we've implemented here at Cookies Critters. Now guys, uh, I have to stress this, that we did catch this respiratory infection nice and early, day one, day two each, before it's progressed to anything nasty and life-threatening. Guys, respiratory infections for snakes can be fatal, so please do take it seriously. If you have any concerns, if you have any doubts, please seek the, uh, the medical advice from a reptile veterinarian. And simply the things that we've done here is increased his heat and removed the humidity. Now the snake still does have access to fresh water on a daily basis, but he only has a water bowl for about 10 to 15 minutes a day, and then the water bowl is removed. Obviously with the twice daily Listerine mouthwash and the nebulizing every day, then uh, this snake will hopefully be, uh, be cured of a respiratory infection in the next two weeks. Now that being said, the snake and I, we're booked in to uh, see the reptile vet in two weeks time for a follow-up. If at this time she's not satisfied with his progress, she may prescribe a course of antibiotics, whether they be oral or whether they be injectable antibiotics, but we will see what happens at that time. And if required, we will do a follow-up with how to administer antibiotics to your snake. Okay guys, so that is it for today's video. I hope this content did help you out. If you do have experience with a snake with a respiratory infection, we would love to hear your story down in the comments section below. If this video was helpful and you did enjoy it, please do hit that like button. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications. That way you won't miss a coming video. And as always guys, if you've got them, keep your beard treated and your snakes heated. <laughs>